Hi guys, how you doing? Um, I thought I'd do a quick video since I've not done one in a few weeks. It's been a bit busy. Anyway, so this is a video at the end of week nine. So obviously you're about to uh, have a week off. So well done up to this point. It's been really tough going. You've done great. The beginners have done amazing. Um, the last ses few sessions have just sort of started to turn a wee bit and set the tone for the few weeks after you come back. A wee bit more aerobic based, a bit more condition based less focus on the sort of resistance band type fo uh, posture work because the hope is that by now you're starting to get it in terms of the movements and engaging the right muscles and stuff like that. Um, so you probably have noticed that there's there's definite phases of the block, um, posture work and then a bit of weights uh, and then we're starting to move into a bit more dynamic conditioning work, especially with the kettlebells um, and that will sort of continue on for the next few weeks. There's not, been a, there's not really been a big emphasis on heavy weights this block and don't, it's that's cool um, I don't think it always has to be like that I think it, that's that's the best way to approach training sometimes is to like focus in different areas uh, that's certainly how I've done it all my life like you go through the phases of, of, of prioritising like strength specifically and then balance and core work and you're just you just try and claw it all together so quite often with progress it is like two steps forward and then as you then maybe focus on something else, one back on the thing you focused on before, uh, and then two steps forward again, and maybe another one back. And the idea is that over the, the months and the years that you just accumulate of training experience, that everything just slowly, gradually is, starts to crawl forward as you progress. Um, and the same can be said of nutrition, I guess. Um, so, um, what to do in the break? This is just a few suggestions. You, you might you might want to just take the week off and do no exercise. Um, if you've been training like really hard up until now, if you've been doing, especially if you've been doing four sessions a week, if you've been doing those four sessions a week for a whole a whole nine weeks, then take a bit of time to just chill, and enjoy yourself. Um, but if you want to do a bit, I'd say why not do some sprints? Um, you make it, maybe you could do like one, two sessions or three sessions a week. One session could be sort of speed focused, so sit forty to eighty meter sprints, or for maybe aye, maybe forty to eighty meter sprints, um, all out after drills, obviously, and then give yourself reasonable recovery in between those reps every couple of minutes, three minutes or something, two minutes, three minutes. Um, one session could just could be maybe a bit more speed endurance work, one uh, hundreds to one fifties. Um, or 100s to 120s to be honest, maybe better um, or 80s to 120s um, and again, a couple of minutes rest um, or you could, and then another session can be a bit more sort of aerobic based like on the hills, you know, just running running up a hill for 20 seconds walk back down, it might only take you 1 minute 40 to walk back down go again and so on and while you're doing the hills, just concentrate and focus on nice tall hips if you lean over when you're doing the hills, you tend to you, you switch off the the hammies, the hamstrings. Um, we don't switch them off completely, obviously, but they will do less of the work. Core will do less work. Glutes will do less work. Quads will do a lot of the work. Um, and that's quite a, that's a that's a definite thing that happens. Because I actually remember something I forgot to uh, mention a few months ago. I was doing a session on the hill, and my hamstring was really tight and actually tightened up to the point where I couldn't run properly. Um, but because I was on a hill. All I, I was able to complete the session simply by, I started to round, so I started to round my shoulders, I started to hunch over and I very much tr transferred or changed my running style and transferred a lot of my weight onto my quads and I ran the way a lot of folk actually do run, um, very sort of hunched over and my hamstring was fine, I didn't feel a thing um, because I was basically switching off because I was significantly reducing the range of movement on the hamstring um, so I wasn't feeling it and I was able to complete the session <laughs> so just bear that in mind like the taller you run, the bigger the range of movement the more you're going to bring on your hamstrings and uh, glutes and things like that and, and it means you're going to be more upright so your core's going to engage more so I always try and remember that um, even when you're going out jogs I, I know I'm not the biggest proponent of going out jogging uh, just because I think there's other things that will tick more boxes first um, in terms of exercise that the average person would get but at the same time I, I know there's a lot of benefits to going out running um, mentally as well as physically but if you are going out just try and be aware of your posture more you should you hopefully will be now anyway because you've been doing the boot camp and um, you're constantly maybe thinking about running a bit taller just remember though, when you're going to a long run, you, you shouldn't be running the way you sprint. Sprinting and running are different running mechanics or jogging, sorry. So you wouldn't you wouldn't try and run, you wouldn't try and go a jog with high knees. That would be 
Well, it would look funny for a start. <laughs> a few funny looks, and that's not how you'd run. It's very inefficient. Um, but that doesn't mean to say you can't be more aware of your posture when you run or go out a long run. Just still think of it standing tall, um, engaging the core, shoulders back and down, chest up. And if if you can't do that, that's one of the reasons why you should be aiming to improve it. And that's one of the reasons why you're at the boot camp as well, because we obviously address a lot of those issues that will carry over into things like running and other sports. So, um, you're doing great so far. Like, honestly, it's been really, really enjoyable. Um, I can't believe how well everyone's just getting on with sessions. The training intensity is perfect. Like, I feel like everyone just is so used to the training intensity now. Um, and it's funny because I've joined a gym recently, which I'm enjoying, and it's funny but because when you go back into a gym setting, you realise how how like low the training intensity um, is um, or how, how, how difficult it is to get a really hard training intensity because it's all to do with the environment um, and that's something that's definitely unique about about the shed, the darkness, the lights, the group the group mentality um, and it's just, so what you're doing, the way you're training is amazing, like you genuinely should be chuffed with what you're doing and how you're doing it because you're doing brilliant. Um, what to improve on or what to focus on in the break? I think most folk will benefit definitely from doing some single leg work practice. Um, so what I've been noticing with the single leg work, and um, obviously we've been, we've been doing a lot of single leg deadlifts, is it's, it's completely normal um, that obviously some folk are more stable than others, but the, the ones that are sort of struggling with it, um, physically stable, I mean, not mentally, <laughs> but, um, the ones that are struggling with it are... I can see that some folk are sort of rushing through it. It's almost like they're dreading it a wee bit, and they're just trying to they're trying to rush through the reps. So it's very like small ranges of movement, and they're trying to rush up and down just to get it done. Um, but the problem with that is that you're never going to actually master it. Um, you almost so you need to force yourself into the uncomfortable positions that your body's struggling to handle um, due to maybe a lack of glute med activation or general um, stability that's lacking. So what I'd suggest, like, because I so that. But when you get to sessions, remember, don't don't use the weights unless you're comfortable that you're getting a good movement. But what I would suggest that everyone could benefit from on the break is to practice the bottom position of the single leg exercise. So this is a wee drill you can do. This is single leg works great, not just for us, but it's also really good for like uh, athletes. And so see kids, see any children you've got that are, are, are wanting to develop at sport. Um, it's really crucial that they have really good stability, um, strength, stability, mobility. Um, and one from a, because of a perf for performance but two for injury prevention so this, this drill that I'm going to suggest you guys do is the same one that if you've got kids and they're into sport you can get them doing it it's a bit, it's a bit fun as well and um, they'll probably show you up because <laughs> their kids are often better at these things um, but anyway so I'm going to tilt the camera just so you can see my feet I mean it's, I've already gone through it at the class but I think it's just worth reminding you of it so remember essentially right, you're wanting to do a one-legged deadlift so I would suggest everyone would benefit from going down really low right so how low they are maybe um, and practice so get your foot into a, a bit more centered take the foot off the floor okay so they and try and be stable as you can then switch sides go the other way and just so just remember though when you're doing that you want to make sure that you maintain a good posture here. I know you, you can't actually see my upper body there, um, or my shoulders, but when you're doing that drill, use your phone to video yourself. Keep your shoulders back and down. Okay, it's quite common when folk are going down, they're starting to round. And what do you know as soon as you round? You're switching off a lot of the stabiliser muscles because you're making the movement easier. That's why you want to do it like that. It becomes more efficient, but it becomes more efficient because it switches off the muscles, the very muscles you're trying to, to work. Uh, so I, I would genuinely suggest you just practice that. So try to hold it for maybe three or four seconds per leg, um, eight to 10 reps, three to four sets. So make it your mission, not just this week, but in the next few weeks, I think it's a really good one to practice in the house a couple of times a week. Make it your mission to become more stable on that in that position and tease, the, tease a bit of depth out it, do you know what I mean? So I think a few folk, here, there's the weight plates, I think if they're dreading it a wee bit, if a few folk are worried, what they do is they sort of, they come down and then they come up very quickly like this, and they're all over the place, and it's it's a very small base movement and because they're struggling with it, so they're trying to rush through it, and they're just trying to think, oh, I'm just going to get this done, but instead, that's the very reason why you shouldn't be rushing through it, you should be taking your time, getting rid of the weights if you have to, and just concentrate on getting the position, so remember, go down into a deadlift position, bringing the foot into the centre, 
and then try and take the other foot off and be as stable as you can. It'll be very difficult. You'll feel you're, you're wobbling about the knee will wobble, the hip will wobble, but that's the whole point. You're trying to work those muscles that'll help stabilize those areas. And um, so, from an injury prevention, it's really good. From a performance prevention, it's really good. A performance prevention, <laughs> performance perspective it's very good um, for an injury prevention perspective it's very good um, and obviously from an aesthetic perspective that helps uh, build those muscles right so but that comes last so you can't expect those muscles to develop when, until you've become better at that, that performing that movement itself so in other words once your performance improves so practice that don't do a huge amount else if you don't want to obviously but try constant, always think about your posture so if you're going to start going to classes over the week again that's not a problem obviously it's up to you what you do but don't try try and remember the things we've been trying to teach you though like so don't just start doing healthy leather classes and your shoulders are all over the place and there's no no consideration for your glutes your shoulder and your core and your everything so try and think about these things now you, you know about them in terms of food just try and do what you're doing um, protein Protein, protein, protein. Um, it's the key. It really is the key. Um, there's, in fact, there's even there's even evidence su- 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 suggesting that hung- at the end of the day, it's all about hunger. If you're if you're if you're overweight and you're overeating, it's because of like you're struggling to contain hormones, hunger hormones. Ultimately, yep, I know I've mentioned it before. There's other elements to it, psychological elements. But if it's a real sort of ravenous feeling you get a lot of the time, you all, you always feel you're um, eating then you need to look as to why, okay, and again, if it's hunger hormones, then you need to try and, try and like, deal with them, okay, but what, 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 um, by eating better, basically, but what we do know is that, there's some evidence to suggest that if you're overweight, then hunger hormones can, um, or, or hormones that can, they tell you you're full, can actually be higher, part of, which is maybe quite confusing, but if, can sometimes be higher in folk that are obese, or overweight, but, because they're so prevalent, these hormones because they're overweight, they they, they become resistant to the, the the signaling effects of that of those hormones. So even though the the satiating hormones might be f- uh, quite high in their in their body, their body is almost like resistant to the signals, um, which is just another reason why you have to really work with. You can't just listen to your body because sometimes your body, if you might not always tell you what it what it needs. Occasionally, it will sort of it, will, it can end up giving you mixed signals, <laughs> um, so it's, and that's why it's important to try and eat foods that you know will definitely work in your favour, and that's where the protein comes in, that's where the fibre comes in, so that's why it's essential, okay, until you get on top of that, that whole concept of it consuming a higher protein diet, and more fibre in your diet, then you'll never really fully be able to say, yeah, I definitely tried and and it didn't and 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 not, it didn't work if that makes sense. But thing is, if you if you do try and you get it na- and you nail it, it will work. Um, but yeah, I, I, anyway, I don't really want to turn this into a nutrition talk. I was just sort of thinking out the top of my head there, and that came into my head. Anyway, so yeah, you're doing great. It's been really really good. And um, there's only obviously one more session this evening, and then we've got sprints Saturday and Sunday, and then that's it for a week. Okay, so next weekend sprints won't be on obviously because that was part of the week off, and then you'll be back to normal for a week for the for the Monday. Uh, so and then suddenly there's only seven weeks left, so it's just mental. <laughs> you know, you're past the halfway stage, this is week nine, and you've done so well. Um so that was all. Just wanted to finish off of that video for the week because I've not really done one in a while. Um I saw the I saw the, the graph chart or whatever you call it, the poll chart on on um uh on the the page. So there's a lot of folk wanting to do the, the boot camp again in January. That's obviously really cool, <laughs> I, I can only thank everyone that's keen to do it again, because it's, it's quite overwhelming to know that that sh- number of people I want to do it again, so that's cool, anyway, um, have a great holiday if you're going away anywhere, and I'll, f- I'll see you tonight or tomorrow if you're at Sprints, alright, cheers guys, bye.